This is the sixth video in the series for Excel 2013 and in this video we'll try to understand examples of absolute reference, named ranges and how to use named ranges in your calculations and also understand copying and pasting. So the first thing is for absolute reference. So I have this example here. So if you want you can pause the video and uh, type this. I have the salespeople like John, Peter and they've been selling certain amount and I need to first find the total so I'm just going to highlight it and hit the auto sum button so I will have my total there now up here I want to figure out what percentage of the total did John sell and what percentage did Peter sell so to find the answer all I have to take is do a simple division which is the individual sales and then divide it by the total so do that for each and every one of them and I'll get my percentage so I'll do equal individual sales divided by total and I'll use this check mark enter and I find that my recording program acts a little weird so I have to do click here and then the total comes up there which shouldn't happen in your case now I want to do a fill handle because I want this formula to be copied down there so if I use the fill handle I get error messages now to understand this I'm just gonna to go to the formula tab and turn on the show formulas so you see what happens is if you know what fill handle does from the previous video fill handles takes the formula and copies the formula down which is a divide sign and it will change the cells so B2 will change to B3 because it's in row 3. However, B6 changed to B7 and B7 is empty. And then B3 changes to B4 which is good. I want it to change but then B7 changes to B8 and so on and so forth. I'm just going to press the show formula again so I see my results. That's why I get this error messages div slash 0. So if you ever come across it, what it means is that the 7, 8 and 9 is empty in this case and you cannot divide anything by 0. So to fix this problem we need to understand the point of absolute reference. I'm just going to highlight it and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to do the same calculation again equal individual sales divided by the total. Now I need to make the B6 what's called absolute. Absolute means when I use the fill handle don't change this in the calculation. B2 can change to B3, but not the B6. So to do this, I can do two ways. I can click in front of B, and I can press Shift and 4 to put the dollar sign. Click in front of 6 and press Shift and 4. Hold the Shift key down and press 4 so that it will put the dollar sign. Or, I'll show you another way which is a little faster. I click on after this when my cursor is there or here, wherever. I just press the F4 key on the keyboard. You see on the top of your keys, keyboard you have F1, F2, F3 keys. So as soon as, you, as I press F4, it puts the dollar symbol for me. I'm going to use check mark enter. So I stay in that cell. And now I click in it and I use for the fill handle. And I just pull it down. And now I have my right answers. And I'll just turn on the show formulas. And you'll see that you see B2, B3, B4 change, but not the B6. So, so the idea of understanding this is that like, this is a very simple example because you could have a very complicated calculation. And you could have a cell somewhere where you don't want to change. And you can also learn more about this absolute reference because depending on where you put the dollar sign, it will have an impact. So, I'll, so for example, like if I wanted B to change to C when I go sideways or things like that in the calculation, then I don't have to put the dollar sign in front of B. I'll only put it in front of 6. So that means 6 is absolute. So B will change to C and then D. And the same way when I have a calculation going down and I wanted to make the 6 absolute or, or B absolute, I could put the dollar sign in front of B but not in front of 6. So that means B6 will change to B7 and B8 because the dollar sign is in front of the 6. So I'm going to press the show formula again. I'll come back to home. While it is highlighted, I can hit the percentage symbol. So it gives me the answers in percentages. 
and I can if I want it I can change this back to general so it goes back to general so I'll hit percentage again so this is what's called absolute reference we'll go to the next example for named ranges so here I have some uh, not region I think this is going to be products and these are sales of shirts for 2008 pants shoes and jackets and I want to do some calculation here so all I need to do the simple one is I can highlight it like this and I can hit the auto sum so you see it does all the calculation for each year now here I want to do the grand total which is the total of calculation of all three years to do this I can click on auto sum now I can highlight the three totals and then I'm done so that's my summation of all the totals now in what I want to do is that I want to do some of these calculations but I want to do the calculations say up here on this sheet the absolute reference sheet maybe up here I would like to do equal to summation of I can start the cells and then I have to go back to named ranges and then I have to highlight the cells of 2008 sales and then I can use the check mark enter and then there is my total and it's showing me the answer in percentages because percentages is above it I'll just change this to general so instead of going out there and highlighting it I can do this by using range names so let me show that to you so the first thing is how do you give ranges a name and now what are ranges so when I highlight these cells they are more than one cell so it's called a range of a cell now I want to call these certain names I want to call it a certain thing so I'll know what it is so this is sales for 2008 so I highlight them and I can click in this box here which is called the name box and I type sales 2008 and I can hit enter now I know I've done it right because I'm gonna click away and now if I highlight these cells again I should say sales 2008 so I know I've done it right now when it comes to the names you cannot put one S or anything that starts with a number first you have to put a alphabet first so you can put S1 a1 but you cannot put 1a or 2a or 2000a the first character has to be an alphabet and you cannot put a spaces in the middle so that's the rule you need to know I can highlight these cells click in the name box and I can type sales 2009 and I can hit enter I can highlight these cells click up here and I can type sales 2010 I can hit enter and I can double check it and everything's fine now if you make a mistake and you want to fix the problem then you'll have to go to the formulas tab and then click on name manager and in this you will see all the names so you can click on any one you can delete it go back and recreate it or you can edit it change the names click up here and then go back and highlight the proper range again so I'll just click cancel and close this so that's what you have to do under formulas name manager I'll come back to home so I've given it a name now I'll show you how you can use it in a calculation so maybe I'll just do something here so say up here I was doing a summation of sales of 2010 so I can do equal sum start the bracket and I just start typing SA and you see it gives me all the three names that I have used so I can click on sales 2010 close the bracket and I can use check mark or hit the enter key on the keyboard and my calculations done there is another way of doing it if I want I can start the sum function the auto sum it will try to make a guess but if you don't remember the names just press the F3 key on the keyboard and it will give you the names of all the ranges that you have and I can choose sales 2009 click OK and I can use the enter check mark and it is done 
Now say if I wanted to do summation of all the three ranges like sales 90, 2008, sales 2009. So all I have to do is keep putting the commas. So I can do it manually or start the sum function. Press F3. I choose the first one. Click OK. Comma if I want and then I can type sales 2009. Comma. Press F3 again if you wanted to and then you can do it like that too and that's it it's done now you can do this anywhere on the sheet you could be on the 10,000th row and you can use the ranges in your calculation it could be average max min wherever you needed to use it you can use that in your calculation and this is the idea behind naming ranges and using them in your calculations and the last thing we'll look at is understanding how to copy and paste information. So if I highlight this information and I copy it, you see it has a dancing light around it. That means the information has been copied. And I can come to the sheet 4 and I can click here and I can just hit the paste button on the top. Because all the information and the calculations are with it, everything's been copied. That's fine. Now, if I come back to name ranges sheet. Now, if you wanted to name your sheet, you can just double click on it. Or you can right click on it and choose rename. So you rename it and you can also delete the sheets if you needed it. Now, you see this dancing light. It means the information is still copied. If you wanted to stop it, you can just click on the escape key on the keyboard to stop it. So I can highlight it again and copy it. Uh, not this, sorry. I just need to copy the totals now. So I want to take these three totals. I want to copy it. And on this total of range, I have these years. So I want to paste all of the three totals of the three individuals here. Year. So if I hit the paste button, you see, I get an error message because, I'm going to come back to the previous sheet, under this 22,500, there is a summation function. It's not an actual number. So when I copied it and pasted it, it only pasted the formula, if you look in the formula bar. And it couldn't figure out what to do with it. So there's something else we have to do. So I'm just going to highlight and delete this. I'll come back to my named ranges, highlight the three totals, copy it, come back to the total of range, click below 2008. Now, instead of hitting the paste, I'm going to click in the drop down button. And there are different ways of pasting things. So, you see, there is an option called paste values. So, when you point to it, it says paste values. There's also an option called paste formulas, which we don't want to use. I'm going to use paste values. So you see, if you look here and look at the formula bar, it copied the numbers from the cell and puts it here. But there is another way of pasting. So I'm going to click below here because it remembers my last copy. So I can click in this drop down button. Instead of doing a paste value, what I want to do is do a paste link. So this button here. This is the new feature. In the previous version, it was much better because they had the word paste link rather than these images. So I have to point to it, and that's the paste link. Paste link means information here is connected to the information on the previous sheet. So if anything changes on the previous sheet, it will also change here. So if I choose that, they both have the numbers here. You see this too. However, I'm going to click on A5. If you look in the formula bar, it says equal named ranges exclamation point B6, which is my sheets are called named ranges. So I have a sheet called named ranges. So this cell is connected to named ranges B6, which is this one. So now say if I change the total for shirt from 2000 to say 5000 I type it I hit enter now my total changed here so let's see what happened when I go to the total of range sheet you see this total change not this one because this one is linked 
So wherever you need, you can link your information. So when things change on one place, they will automatically change on the other place too. So this is known as copying and pasting. And you get to choose whether you want to paste values or do you want to paste a link. Now I'll talk about the same concept in when you take information from Excel and you want to put it in Microsoft Word. So I'm just going to highlight this and copy it and I'll go to my start button and I'll start Microsoft Word 2013 or whatever version you have. A lot of these things also apply to 2010 and I'll start a blank document. Now I've copied my information from Excel and I could hit the paste button right here on the top and it will work. But what happens is you see there are no lines around it. So I'll hit enter to create a distance from it. Instead of hitting paste I'm going to click in the drop down button and then choose paste special. And then from here I'll say it's a paste however the information is coming from Excel. So I'm still doing a regular paste, but I'm telling Word that the information is coming from Excel, and I click OK, and now you see the information is there. Okay. I'll just click here and delete this. Can't seem to delete it. I'll just do it like this here. Now up here, I'm going to go back and do a paste special. However, this time I'll say do a paste link and it is coming from Excel and I will click OK. So this is a regular paste and this is a paste link. I will come back to my Excel and I'll start making some changes here. So say I use the cell styles and I apply some kind of a styles to it or colors. And maybe I'll also put some borders, maybe a thick border. Okay, so let's see what happened to my word. I'll come back to word. So you see the link? It automatically changed, but not the regular paste. So you can apply this to wherever you want it. If you had a chart, which I'll be showing to you later, you can copy and paste a chart in PowerPoint. Now if I save this word file, every time this word file will open, this information will check with the original Excel file to make sure that you have up-to-date information this one not. Now if I click here, double click here, you can make changes right in here. When you double click on this, it will take you back to the original file till the time the file is on this computer. Once you delete the Excel file, then it's no longer linked. You will only have the old information. So this is the concept of copying and pasting from Excel to Word. Now if any numbers change, so if I go back to name ranges, I change this 2500 to say two dollars this total change twenty thousand which also changed on this file right there you can see the difference from here to here and also this will change on the word file so there it is you see twenty thousand eight fifty two but up here it still says twenty three thousand three fifty so that's it for copying and pasting so in the next videos we'll talk about some more functions and also get to charts thank you for watching